Hey there, welcome to another video with Ripple Resource. Today I'll be going through my opinion piece of what I think are going to be the top five cards that are going to be good to buy now for set two. Um, and potentially, potentially even in the next couple of weeks before more decks and deck lists and tournament lists come out here. And I have five cards here that I think have been proven to be really, really good and are also shown to be low right now and have the in my opinion, have a high chance of costing twice as much in a few months. So the first one here is Millennium Falcon. This is gonna be the most expensive card in this list today. Um, it doesn't really fit into a ton of decks right now. There's a Han deck that's playing it well. There's a Sabine deck that's playing it well, but it's, you know, cards that are worth a lot, they're played in like every deck that's cunning, right? Or every duck that's green command, right? Those are the cards that are like really, really expensive because they're played in every single list. Uh, and also rarity really factors into this. So this card is a little bit more expensive, but it doesn't fit into a ton of decks right now. I think it will come down in cost a little bit more maybe in the ne next month, but I'd say with, you know, I could see this card costing more double in a couple months. Uh, I think it's going to be a staple in most decks just because it enters play ready. I have no idea what they're going to print in the next set, but I, my gut tells me that this is going to be a relatively powerhouse as we move forward. It also has potential underworld synergy. The next set is going to be a bounty hunter, a lot of bounty hunter themes going on. And the underworld is a part of the bounty hunter, uh, I guess, flavor wise, they kind of have a lot of crossover. So I could totally see that being something that's played upon and we could get some synergy with the Millennium Falcon and some cunning underworld cards that could play with the Millennium Falcon. I also think this card is just in general, extremely efficiently costed. In my opinion, for its stats and what it does is the best three drop space unit in the game. It's a three, four that enters play ready at three. You can play it on turn two, very, very strong. So the price here is roughly 20, it was hovering around 20. And then it kind of went up a little bit, but some of these cards have gone up a little bit more than they should have because packs are selling out. And so all the singles have gone up a couple dollars. So I would say picking this up for 20 bucks is a good deal. Anything below that is a steal. Um, it's going to be the most expensive on the list today, but it's something I could see like, hey, get a play set if you can, trade into it if you can. I think it's just nice to have it in your collection. If, if the next set comes out, this card could be harder to get. It could be more desirable and has a high chance of being playable into the future. So the next card I want to feature here is Cunning. In my opinion, this is hands down the best single event in the game. If you were just to look at every card in a vacuum, Cunning is probably one of the best. It's just really, 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 really hard to build with right now. Uh, but what we did find out is yesterday of the recording of this video, the game designers said there's going to be more support for double aspect decks simply because double aspect is hard to build with right now. And having more cards in your card pool means that you can hedge your bets and you have more options. And so cutting out a color with a with a only 252 cards right now really limits your ability to build a deck. But these cards are only going to get better. And in fact, there's another copy of this card on the list. I think all of them are good. I think all of them are good, but if I'm going to recommend, hey, what top five to pick up in the next two months, uh, I would say that this is going to be on the list. Um, so basically, anytime a card gives you multiple choices like this, it just is so much better than other cards that only do one thing when they're played, right? Just more flexible, more options, more context, more situational playability, and Cunning is definitely that card. So... Just $12, it's a legendary by the way, so they're harder to pull. That's a huge, that's massively relevant. So keep in mind the rarity is important here. The foil is only 70 cents more. So if you if you don't mind playing with Pringles, um, you can uh, you can get the foil for 70 cents more. Um, pretty much the same price. If you're trading someone, I would almost, is someone really gonna quibble over 70 cents? You can probably trade for the foil and the non-foil at the same same level here. Definitely pick these up. Uh, I was able to trade into all mine and when I traded for mine, they were $15 and so it's come down three more dollars. Keep in mind when the next print run hits stores in the next couple weeks, if not months here, the game is going to, we're going to see a flood again. So this might come down a little bit more, but just saying 
hey, top five cards to get for the next set. This is the price right now. You could wait a month and it could go down, but I am not a TCG analyst. I'm just looking at what I pulled for today, March 28th, 2024. And I think for the price of this card, this card has a high chance of going up based off of its playability and the ability to go into more decks. So the next card is a card I've actually seen quite a bit. It is Force Lightning. It's a legendary event as well. So again, less copies floating around because there's less, it's harder to pull a legendary card. It's a very flexible card in what it does. It can target anything and it loses all of its abilities. Then if you control a force unit, pay two uh, or pay any number of resources and deal two damage to the chosen unit. So it does hit space units. So super relevant, hits both ground and space. And there's just not that many force units right now, but we know that there are going to be more force units. There are going to be Jedis. There are going to be Sith. There's going to be, I don't know, Inquisitors and stuff like that floating around. So there's going to be more force support coming. We just, it's, you can't make a Star Wars game and not have the force. And this card seems like it'll be made useful eventually. It is a little pricey for not being super, super playable right now. It's still hovering around 12 bucks. I did check the price checker. It was $5 a few weeks ago, and then it spiked. I don't know if it spiked because people saw it was $5 and they bought it out, um, but I expect this to come down with the next print run. So when this hits like four or $5 again in the next like month and a half, absolutely pick this card up. I think for 12 bucks right now, we can hold off, but I just want to highlight that it did exist at a lower price. And it is very possible that this is going to come down again in the next month. And it's it's got to be on the list because of its playability. It's a one cost card. So it's super flexible. You can just pay it for its base effect or you could pay three to do four damage to something. That's really good. You could pay four to do six damage to something. And that's still really good. That, that actually eliminates most of the leaders in the game right now. Um, or you could pay five and eliminate any leader instantly because um, you can actually hit leaders with this card. So it's very, very good. And I think that's gonna make this card a mainstay I mean, it's got Palpatine doing his thing, right? The dude can't hold a lightsaber anymore, apparently. So I think this is a very, very um, playable card into the future, and it's a future-proof card that you can invest in. Like I said, though, I did want to mention it was $5 a few weeks ago, and just keep that in mind. The next card on the list is going to be Aggression. A lot of the same things I said about Cunning also apply to the Aggression card. This will just get more powerful over time, right? We get more access two cards that allow for double double aspect decks to be playable. And I think it's it's fairly weak for what it is compared to the other ones. But when you look at the price, you'll be like, oh, I gotcha, roughly $5, right? So if you could pick these up at five bucks, the normal price is $5.95. $5 is the price of a pack. If you were to open this in a pack, would you feel okay about it? Sure, you probably wouldn't feel bad, you wouldn't feel great. Maybe you're looking for it, then you would feel great. Um, regardless, think about it that way. It's the price of a pack and it's a legendary. You're not even guaranteed a legendary. So this card, I think picking up for $15 and getting a play set seems like a pretty good thing to do. Uh, if you're like me, I've only bought one booster box and I've traded into all of my playables. So I, I don't really even have that many cards. In fact, I ended up giving away a stack this big to some high schoolers at my local game store that they bought the starter decks. They bought the starter decks and they were playing in our tournament. And I was like, guys, 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 here you go. Here's a bunch of staples. I mean, I couldn't let these, these, they were super excited about the game. I'm like, boom, here you go. Here's 300 cards, just gave it to them. Uh, but if you're looking to get them, I'd say now is a good time. I could see this card going up when set two starts spoiling. You know what happens when spoilers come out? We see a card that goes well with this card, triple the price instantly. And the set's not even out yet. That's what's gonna happen. And so when you see these legendaries, four or $5, the game is so small right now. Every legendary is gonna be, see some play to some extent. I mean, maybe not, that seems a little little extreme, but this card will definitely see some play. Uh, and, and, and you know what? It's fun. It's a fun card as well. So if picking up a play set for five just makes a lot of sense. So would highly recommend that. I, I think I have two, so I'm gonna pick up my third copy. And my opinion is, again, I'm not like a TCG finance bro, but I would definitely pick this up. And then lastly here, this card is in so many decks right now. Very fun card, U-Wing Reinforcement. The card's an all-star. Anything that lets you look and put cards into play for free is very, very strong. And there's a card from Magic the Gathering, Collected Company. 
Um, it was spoiled early on and you know, a lot of people kind of didn't really think about this card very much. It's a rare, it's not even a mythic and magic, like legendaries are the magic, magic and mythics and magic the gathering. And this card was actually the most expensive card in the set. You get to look at the top six cards of your library and put two creature cards with converted mana cost three or less from among them onto the battlefield, the rest of the bottom of your library in any order. Ewing lets you look at the top 10. You get to put three units, combined cost seven or less, put the other cards at the bottom of the deck in your random order. Man, anything that gets things into play for free and lets you go off the top and, and pick pick the ones you need for the for, for that that game state is super, super powerful. Do not sleep on this card. It is $4.50 right now, less than the price of a pack. And I I think that this is probably the number one card on my list that you should pick up a playset of if you don't have it. This card could this could be a $20 rare one year from now. It could be a $25 rare. I would not, it would not surprise me. It would not surprise me. For what this card does, it, it is a Vader, Darth Vader-like effect in heroism. And so it's similar to Darth Vader, where you get to look at the top 10 and put things into play. Look at how expensive Darth Vader is, and then imagine, hey, once this card gets access to more utility cards and more cards to play, this card is only going to get better as time goes on. It's only going to get better. So I'd highly recommend picking up a playset for $4.50. If you don't have any copies yet and you haven't bought that many cards, I would definitely just pick some up. Um, I'm sure someone on eBay, if, if there's eBay sellers, you could even best offer a playset for like 12 bucks, I'm sure, or 10 bucks. Uh, and regardless, I think that every card in this list is really, really good. They're seeing play here and there. They're not necessarily tier one deck cards. They're not like a place set in every single tier one deck, um, but they are very, very strong. They're really affordable right now, and they have the ability to be really, really good with more cards. And it's not necessarily like, oh, we need they need we need them to print this type of card. Just more cards in general and Ewing and Reinforcement is just going to get access to more choices and that's going to make the card better and that's going to make the card more expensive over time. That's all I got for you all today. Let me know if there's any cards that you think should have been in the top five or you'd swap out in the comments below. There's definitely some that I chew, some some cards that I chewed over and decided to cut from, from the video. And I just wanted to point out to 87% of y'all are not subscribed. Definitely, you know, you, we all love to watch YouTube content, but every subscription matters. So if you could subscribe, that would be great. It helps the channel, helps give me information on, on the data on the back end of who likes what, what videos are doing well. And it's very, very helpful to the channel. It helps me continue to do this. So thank you very much and talk to you all soon.